Okay, so I'm going to continue to cut out the remaining elements, right? So I was last working on the stone here. And so what I'll do is I'll use the lasso, and because it's in the middle ground, I'll just use a one pixel feather. And the more practice you get at this, the better. I'm just using a trackpad, which I'm not as good at as a stylus or even as a mouse. But all can be done with practice. If you need it to be more precise, you can always zoom in. And we're working at pretty low resolution here, so I can see the pixels. And with a, a one pixel feather, that means anywhere I click and drag with my lasso, it's going to echo out from that one pixel and soften. And the other nice thing, I haven't told you this before, if you want it to soften more, because I have it feathered, I'll show you this time. All you have to do is hit delete multiple times. And it will soften out a little bit more each time. So I just hit delete three times. And so you can see that's a little bit more blurred than it was before. So whenever there's any feather in a selection, hitting delete multiple times will soften it more and more. It will kind of bite away at it. And so if you're getting a little bit of a haze, sometimes just a one pixel feather will, will fix that. Okay. Now, I have a lighting issue here. Right? This is brighter than it should be in this volcano. There should be shadow underneath it. But right now I'm just trying to get rid of all the the features. But I'll show you um, when we're adjusting coloring and lighting how I can darken the inner crater of that volcano more. Next element is this foreground rock. Remember, that's internally composited. So I want to erase away from this edge. And because this is now in the foreground, I'm going to go to a zero, zero pixel feather. And get a really nice, sharp, detailed delineation of this. I can always do it in chunks. Looping around, letting it close, and then deleting. And as you get more practice, you will get more and more confident with it. And you'll go faster and faster. All right, now this is something that often happens in compositing. Because I internally composited this rock and shifted it over to here, it looks very copy-pasty, right? So an easy way to fix that is to take this background layer and shift it some more, especially in the foreground. So I'm going to hit Control T. And I'm going to warp it by right-clicking within my transform box. And as long as I don't lose the horizon line I want, I can shift it. In fact, I can even kind of shift the mountains so that they work a little bit better and the horizon so it works a little bit better with my volcano.
You have godlike powers. My last is not working. I'm I've been selecting the place that I want to delete, and it's still just like it's still there. So I guess my only suggestion there, when the tools just aren't doing what they're supposed to, and this would be true in Photoshop too, is what you want to do is save your work and then restart PhotoP. Okay. Make sure you save it as a PSD note. Make sure you know where you're saving it to so you don't lose right. that progress. But yeah, you have to do that sometimes. Come on. There we go. Just like rolling dough, you can push and pull it from different sides. Yeah, I think I do like the landmass behind the volcano a little bit. Okay. Next, the big foreground element. So this is a lot of cutting out. And you'll see that because of this photograph, the rocks are pretty sharp and the background's pretty soft. So this might be a good time to try some of the other selection tools like quick selection. Now quick selection tries to use artificial intelligence and detect an edge. So you use it just like the lasso, but when I let go, it will kind of um, add its own little algorithm on top that it thinks is more precise. Now I feel pretty safe using it here because even if it cuts away some of the rock, that's fine. It's foreground, I'm cutting it away at a, a zero feather. So I'm just really picking and choosing between pixels. And so if my hand slips a little bit, this quick selection should even it out for me. Now where quick selection starts to have a problem is when you try to select too much at once, and then it's bound to make a lot more mistakes. But here I'll intentionally grab a little bit or not select all the blue and see if it can make up for it. No, not really. So you might find that it helps a little bit. The other is the magnetic lasso tool, which can be interesting. This tries to auto detect edges. So as you drag, it will kind of set down anchor points. And so it's a little bit of a stop gap when you have a clear edge you're trying to define. But you see it left a lot of blue there. So then I can just move my selection in and then cut out a little bit closer in. So depending on what your cutout needs, think of all the different specialized scissors that we can use in Photoshop. Some are soft edged with feathering. Some try to do the work for you and detect the edge. But in order to, to really have control, remember you're just controlling every pixel you see. So there aren't any just easy shortcuts that do a quality job. But what were you doing with the eraser way earlier again? You'll have to say a little bit more. Oh, like toward the beginning when you were you were playing with the size of the eraser and controlling how hard the edges were. What I can't remember what you used that for. Yeah, so when we when we rough cut and placed our images, 
they had a lot of like a halo around them that was hard edged, right? Just like if you cut them out of a magazine. Yeah, yeah. So to get rid of that that hard edged halo, I used a soft edged eraser at one hundred percent opacity. And then you you use that to erase the hard edges and it changes it into a soft transition. Uh, that's what you have the lasso tool on the feathering of one for or feathering no so the the eraser i use for kind of big areas like blending sky the the lasso with the feathering will be a very soft gradation just softening the edge oh that's for small adjustments but the erasers for the big ones yeah the eraser is when you're blending soft into soft like sky into sky or grassy field into grassy field but for like mountains and rocks, I want a nice crisp edge because rocks don't have any transparency to them. So you can see the big difference in lighting and color in my foreground rocks. And because my foreground becomes more and more a contrasted and sharp focused that's going to make it so i need to work harder to make those colors match in the next step and i also want a landscape that's really colorful so i'm not a slave to my reference just because the rocks are are brown and, and kind of uninspiring now it doesn't mean they need to stay that way but the first step is to get them cleanly cut out Also, what I would like you to do before next class is make sure you have your whole sketch area covered, right? You don't want any big open holes. So if you don't have enough references to do that, you, you might have to find some, some background reference that fills in in a way that's acceptable. All right. Now, no matter how much we work on this stuff, there's going to be little little errors pixel by pixel. Now I've got all the layers turned on and all of the edges are fairly clean and where I want them. Now I can look at the composition as a whole and think, well, what does it need? And I think it does kind of need something in the bottom right because that just feels kind of dead. So what I want is to bring in more reference. So that's why I have these crystals, the idea of these crystals. Also make it look a little bit more fantasy-ish. So I'll go ahead and bring those in. They're gonna be way too big. And then those will be my last elements and when I bring them onto my work area, then I can crop down and save a lot of memory. And these are from Pixabay. They're nice and large. I'm going to flip it horizontally. I think I like the lighting that I may tilt it a little bit. And so this is just reviewing kind of everything we've done today. I'm going to use my magic wand, do a rough cut around it, and then hit uh, Command-J, because I'm on a Mac, Control-J on a PC. Then delete the layer behind it. And then I can move that down below my foreground layer. It glitched out a little bit there. It's not letting me free transform my thing. When I do so draw it says selected area is empty. So you want to make sure you're selected on the layer you're trying to transform. Or you might have an active selection.